This part of the lesson briefly explains how to assign a default value to an input box. Let's start by opening Excel and then creating a brand new blank workbook. We can then go to the Visual Basic Editor, insert a new module, and then create a new subroutine called Default Cake. In this subroutine, we're going to present the user with an input box, which asks them what their favorite cake is. Now, obviously the most common answer to that question is going to be chocolate. So to save many users having to type in the word chocolate, we're going to set that as the default value for the input box. Let's start by declaring a variable which can capture the result of the input box. Let's go with cake type as string. Now we can use an input box to assign a value to the variable. So let's say cake type equals input box. Because I'm using the input box to return a value, I need to enclose its argument list in a set of parentheses. And I'm going to use separate lines to write out the explicitly named argument. So I'm going to write the name of the prompt parameter. And the prompt parameter is going to ask the user, which cake would you like? I can then assign a default value to the input box by typing in a comma and then on the next line, after a space and an underscore, refer to the default parameter. So here I can refer to the default parameter and instead of just leaving this empty as it ordinarily would be, I can enter the word chocolate. I can then close the parentheses and then test that this works by running the subroutine and checking that I see the word chocolate appear automatically in the input box. There's nothing to stop you from overwriting this. For instance, if you wanted to provide the wrong answer um, and say something like lemon, for example, rather than chocolate, uh, you can happily do that. It's just that if you did want chocolate, all you would need to do is press enter or click OK, and that would return that value to the variable. You don't just have to use an explicit value for the default of an input box. You can also use expressions to calculate it. Let's create a new subroutine called default date. And then in there, we'll declare a variable called star date, and we'll set the type to be a string, as this is the type that an input box returns. I'm then going to allocate a value to the start date variable by making it equal to the result of an input box. This time, the prompt, if I write out the name of the prompt parameter, I can ask the user to enter the start date. So this might be a system that's asking the user to pick values from a list from a particular date, for example. What I can then do is, if I add in the default parameter, I can then set the value of this default parameter to be a formatted version of the current date. So for this to work, I'm going to use the format function. In there, I'm going to refer to the date function to return today's date. Following that, I'm going to set the format parameter to format the date as dd followed by three m's and then four y's. In fact, four m's and four y's. Let's have the full month name. If I then close the double quotes, close one set of parentheses for the format function, and then close one more set of parentheses for the input box function, I can now run the subroutine and see that the default value for this input box is a formatted version of the current date. You can check that just down here on my system clock.